Good morning, everyone. This is Dana from NextGen, and I hope everyone has had a wonderful weekend. Okay, today I'm going to talk to you about my personal planner. Last week, I talked to you about the planner that I used exclusively for business. So this is the planner that I use for my personal side. So, and now sometimes I may include some business in here, but for the most part, I am using it exclusively for my um, personal life. Now, when I started doing um, my planner, I originally started out as book bound. Now at, with a book bound planner, it was very neat and concise, but it didn't give me a lot of flexibility. Um, the pages are what I had, and that was it. Um, there was not a lot of um, creative things that I can do with it. And in addition to that, um, it didn't lay flat or it didn't go back like it would with a spiral notebook. Now, with a spiral notebook, that's kind of what I moved to. I also use um, spiral notebooks as planners. And what was interesting about the spiral is, again, just like the book bound, the number of pages are the number of pages. You really couldn't add to it. The only thing you could actually do maybe would to include a post-it note or something like that. Didn't allow for a whole lot of creativity. So I wanted to have something where I can take the pages in and out. So then I graduated, if you will, to the ring bound planner. Now, um, with the ring bound planner, you didn't get the flexibility that you would with a spiral notebook where you can bend it back. But with the um, ring notebook, I had the flexibility to be able to take pages in and out. And so when I started um, in the workforce, I actually, we didn't use computers like we do now. So that's where the book bound and the spiral notebook and now the ring bound came in. So I actually was able to print pages and insert them into the ring bound planner. So what I found with the ring bound planner, there, the re, I did have the restriction of the size. If I needed more room, it was whatever would fit in the rings. And also with me taking pages in and out, sometimes the rings would not work properly. So those were the restrictions that I had. So um, the last couple of years, I've been using what they call disc bound planners. So um, it gave me the flexibility to add pages in and out. Um, it also um, allowed me to be creative. Again, there's only really one downside, if I was going to call it a downside, and it would be the same thing I would have with a um, vertical no, um, a vertical spiral notebook or even a um, ring-bound binder, and that's because I'm left-handed. But because it's a disc-bound planner, I do have a workaround for that. So I'm going to go ahead and show you the um, planners that I'm using this year. Okay, these are my planners that I'm going to be using for 2023. They are disc bound. This one, this disc is a little bit bigger than this disc. And as you can see, this planner is what they call a classic size. And this size is what they call a big. And the big would be commensurate with your eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. So that's how you would know the difference between the two, along with the fact that this has 11 disc and the other one has, um, the smaller one that's classic size has nine discs. Um, now the reason why I changed my cover, um, this is what they call frosted and I kind of like the way it looked. So this says plan dreams pull weeds, and grow a happy life. So I really like this. And what I liked about the frosted is you can actually see through it and you can put other things behind it. This one was so pretty by itself, I decided just to let it be this way. So let's go ahead and look at the next page. So what is behind it 
is a blank sheet of paper or in this case it's um, a cardstock that's blank on one side and I'll show you the other side okay this is a pretty cardstock um, if I flipped it around it wouldn't look as good but it looks good just the way it is and then on this side we have what they call vellum paper now this is just this is a little bit heavier than your regular um, printer paper but I ran it through the printer you can write on it draw on it whatever you want to do so I decided to use this sheet of paper um, for my positive affirmations for 2023 and right behind it is another cardstock so I thought this was really cute so I decided to do it this way so this is what I have on the front and I'll go ahead and go to March now this is what my monthly looks like and so what I'm going to be doing for my monthly um, we have the notes on this side and the reason why I liked the big um, size and is what I used last year is that it is big enough for me to write information on here now for the monthly on this planner I'm using it exclusively for bills and as you can see this one happens to be for water so at the beginning of the year I put in um, the ones that were done on a um, quarterly basis annual basis I went on ahead and put that in so at the beginning of March what I would be doing is I would be going through and putting in the stickers for the bills that are going to be doing going to be due and then if I'm going to be spending some other money I will be actually be documenting it here so that's what this looks like so in the month of March on this particular plan, um, planner it is the vertical layout so you have the notes here and then you have the um, the days seven days a week that's broken up into three and you can do it any either way you want to do it because I prefer the dashboard and I'll show you what that looks like in just a minute I prefer the dashboard layout for writing plans and I'm basically going to be using that one for my to-do list and I'll show you that in a minute this one I'm going to primarily use for memory keeping now if this was the only planner I was going to use then I can augment it with these sheets of paper so let's say that I wanted to put pictures here um, or, or decorator or whatever and let's say that I wanted to put some more information that pertain to this week well I do have um, add-ins supplements this one is actually a full sheet of paper that I can write in you have the checklist on this side and then you have the dot grid on this side I can add that in I can also add in a daily schedule this one has top priorities here and then notes that I can write here so I can put that in there then I have another one all these I got on clearance by the way it has the days of the week here and then on this side it's dot, dot grid so I can just slip these in I also have some note pages that I'll show you that I have in the back and I also have a two-sided folder that I can put um, papers in now as I said before um, if this was the only planner that I was going to use I can actually use this as a planner and also um, a notebook or uh, not so much a journal because I kind of want to keep my journals together but I would pretty much use this as a planner and then on the back I have tabs for note pages so I have the note pages here and then I have the two-sided folder that I can put pages in so I've got a folder on this side then I also have a folder on this side now um, what I did with this planner is what they call and this is the back this is what the back looks like it's so pretty right so what I did with this planner um, and you see how thick it is and I haven't even gotten started really good um, so what I did with this planner is I did what they call um, a Franken plan so how this 
pl um, planner is sold is actually sold as a monthly. So you get two pages of the month and then you get some note pages. And that's why these discs are a little bit smaller than what I'm normally used to. And I'll show you the, the disc on the classic planner. So this is going to get kind of thick. But that's okay. If it gets too thick, I'll just either change the disc or take some pages out. And that's what makes this customizable. And that's one of the reasons why I like um, disc bound planners. Now, with the, as with the um, spiral notebook and, that I talked about before, or even the ring notebook, one of the things I um, have a challenge with, but I, I can get through it, is that when I'm writing, this is these discs are going to be in the way even though i can fold it over like this okay even though i can fold it over this would still be in the way and if it doesn't bother me that's fine but if i'm doing a lot of writing what i would prefer to do is to take the pages out write on it and then put it back in. There's so many things that I can do with the disc bound. It's so versatile that I can um, deal with the inconvenience of writing with this in the way. So I'm okay with it. So this is what I would, this is my memory keeping and how I would track my finances. So that's what I'm using this planner for. And it, in addition to, I'm also tracking my, um, finances digitally. But if I wanted to look at this um, outside of my computer, I actually have it right here. I can just write the information here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this away and I'm going to show you my um, classic planner. Now, again, this one is big. It has 11 discs. The discs are a little bit smaller than the ones I'm getting ready to show you. This one has a frosted cover. And how I protect it is I put it in a, a pad folio. And before I actually replaced it with a different um, cover um, that I'll show you in just a second. But again, I like this one for memory keeping. Um, if I need to augment it with notes, I can do that. And the pages are already punched. And if I have to punch pages, I can do that. So this is basically my creative and my financial side. Okay, this one is what they call a classic size. Now I'll show you that paper again, the eight and a half by 11, so you can see the difference. You see, it's a little bit shorter, which is fine. So this is pretty much what I use for my to-do. So originally I started out this is a cover that didn't, it didn't come with the planner, but that's okay. And it's what they call Franken planning. And Franken planning pretty much means you take the pieces of the different planners and the notes that um, they have and you put it together to suit your needs. So this started um, January 20, excuse me, this is an 18 month planner. So this started in July. So as you can see how thick this is, this is holding 18 months, whether that um, one that I just showed you is actually holding 12 months. And because I'm using larger discs, it can hold more paper. So this one started in July, horizontal. And horizontal means I was just pretty much doing a lot of writing, um, journaling, if you will. So what I wanted to do is because I was doing a lot of journaling and because I still had a situation with the disc, if I'm doing a lot of writing, I prefer to do it on a um, book bound um, planner or book bound journal, if you will. Now this one is my to do. And what I would do is I would put everything that I need to do for the week, the month, the year in this um, planner. So I went from I went from horizontal to what they call the um, dashboard layout. So I'll show you what the dashboard layout looks like. So on if you remember on the previous vertical, you had each you had days that were on 
both pages for the week going vertically with a note page on the side. This one is a little different. This one you have the entire week on one page. So this is more functional for me. So I'm putting down things that I'm doing each um, the, each day of the week, or I can change it to something else. And then each day I can um, write down certain things or put my to-do list in here. And of course I have the catch-all for errands, my to-do list. This says calls and um, emails, noted and focus on. And of course I can change the headings to suit my needs. And if you want to take a look at the planners that I've already decorated, um, I'll go ahead and put it up in the top and also in the description so you can see what it looks like. But this is pretty much um, what I would be doing in my dashboard layout. This is a little bit smaller. This is what they call a classic size. And this is usually what people are using is this one. However, as I said before, I started out with this layout in the big and it actually served me. So I'll probably go back to that in 2024. And just like my big layout, I did have what they call um, half sheets. So I can use half sheets to supplement the schedule that I already have to write down specific notes. Um, I can add blank sheets in here. I can do whatever I need to do. This, these disk systems are very customizable. So this is more functional than my big planner. But again, I'll probably go back to the dashboard layout in 2024. And keep in mind, I still have the, um, the string notebooks that I have to find a use for. So this is what I'm using as my planner. I'm using this horizontal, excuse me, this dashboard layout in the classic size, which is a little bit smaller. And, and if you notice the cover, this is a hard cover. So I can just take it around just as is. And of course, if you remember from my previous video, I did have a, um, another band that I could put down to include a um, pen holder. I do have a pen holder that I can put on here as well. Now, this one right here, I put it in a pad folio and the pad folio has a pen holder. So I can use that as well. So this one again is for my memory keeping and also um, writing down any expenses that I have. So I'll be opening this up every week um, with the expenses doing this first. So I just wanted to give you an idea of what I'm doing as far as personal planning. And then the previous week I talked about my planning for the business. So hopefully this information was beneficial to you. Um, hope you got a lot out of it. I'll probably in the next week or so talk about the different accessories that I use on these planners to help me um, basically have planner peace. So I will talk to you soon. Thank you again.